Well, uh, welcome to the, uh, the sixth and last uh, session of, of online A to Z in dental implant therapy. Uh, this uh, session will be a, a bit of a departure restoratively from where we've been before. Uh, the other sessions have been a building on both posterior and anterior par partially dentalist situations and uh, using an edentulous jaw model, things become very different. Uh, you notice with this lecture we're going to focus on the maxilla because the truth is the maxilla and the mandible are very different situations. They have diff different challenges and different concerns and we need to be aware of that. So right now we're going to focus on the maxillary and I'm sure in the future we'll have other presentations that include the mandible and we can progress on from there. But I thought it was most appropriate to focus on the maxilla and see where we go. With this lecture I think it's important for us to evaluate the different restorative options how to successfully choose them and educate the patient of their value, and as I said, focusing on the, on the maxilla. Now, as you can see, sometimes we're surprised by patients. Uh, we're surprised we would never expect grandma to need to skydive, but that's what grandma does. Uh, grandma has a challenge because she's wearing an upper denture. Is that an issue that we can resolve with dental implants? Is that is something ridiculous? But it's just my little reminder that um, every patient is different and the needs of every patient are different, and so we need to evaluate those treatment options on that level. So why would we consider implants in the edentulous maxilla? Certainly to improve retention. Although I can tell you I've made dentures on very large maxillary ridges that had wonderful retention just as they are. Uh, but for a bit of security for the patient, and I know you've all had patients that you've made very good dentures that had very acceptable retention and the patient still wanted more security. So dental implants can do that for the patient. It can decrease palatal coverage, which I think is a tremendous advantage to the patient. When we think of an ideal restoration, it's giving the patient back everything they've lost and nothing extra. We're not adding more uh, material, more components than we need. So as the patient's lost their teeth, they've lost their alveolar bone, that's all we're re replacing. So there's advantages to that, and certainly from a taste point of view, from a comfort point of view, an open palate has great advantage. I think the ultimate in terms of most restorative dentist minds and certainly in most patients mind is having a fixed final result. That fix could be porcelain fused to metal, it could be a hybrid restoration of denture teeth, acrylic resin and a metal framework, but the concept of fixed. Is that always the best way to treat the patient though? Is that always solve the patient's primary needs and desires? It might not. So we need to understand what those limitations are and, and treatment plan accordingly. Some of the other issues we might ask ourselves is, does placing implants in the maxilla preserve bone? And of course it does. Is that uh, significant? Uh, for some large maxillas, we've all had patients that have gone the rest of their life with still plenty of bone, but there are of course a number of people that once they have lose the teeth and the steady state loss of the bone that remains in the alveolus leads to a great deal of problems as they get into their elder years when they are much harder to treat. Does it give us lip support? And here I would say no. There's nothing about the implants that give us lip support. It's the restoration on top of the implant that gives lip support. Whether it be a fixed bridge or a full denture, the lip support comes from the restoration. A great surprise to many people for the moderately to severely resorbed maxilla, when we think purely about aesthetics, the most aesthetic restoration can be a denture. A denture gives us ideal emergence profile. It gives us uh, uh, unlimited choices on teeth and color, position, so we can achieve whatever aesthetics we want to have. The downside to a denture is just the fact that it's a denture. It's mobile. It floats on the tissue. It's not an ideal restoration. What are implant keys? I mean, uh, we, we've talked about them for the partially dentulous, and now we really need to look at them in a general sense, especially pointing towards the edentulous patient. Certainly patient selection. Can you work with the patient? Uh, can the patient uh, meet their appointments? Do they want the treatment? Do they accept what they need to go through? And can you do what they really want you to do for them? You determine that quite often during case workup and treatment planning. I think it's imperative that you, you try to find out if you can accomplish what the patient wants you to. 
we need to review that. And if the patient has a concept or a desire that you can't meet or, or doesn't meet their needs, it's better to find out during treatment planning than later when you're trying to justify a restoration the patient doesn't like. An implant system, basically, I want one that gives me the flexibility to do whatever I want to do, it gives me strength, and gives me predictability. Surgical technique, of course, especially in the maxilla, requires a great understanding of the restoration. When the surgeon understands the restoration and is able to place the implants in a way that allows me to create the restoration that we desire, I'm, I'm very appreciative. And so we need to have that great surgical technique that goes beyond just placing the implants where the bone is, but actually places the implants where they need, need to be for the restoration. The abutment selection is not that big a deal for me. Basically, if my implants are in the right spot, I take an impression at the head of the implants, and then we work out the abutments. I don't get all that carried away about what abutment we're going to use, especially for the edentulous arch. Impression technique is critical. If you go back to session one and you review that, seeing how we can make an accurate final model is, is a critical part, is a key to implant restorative dentistry. It makes every single person, if you're able to do a good impression technique, you could restore a full arch of teeth. Not everybody can restor restore a full arch of natural teeth because of the complexities involved. But you have control with implants you don't necessarily have with teeth. So a good impression technique makes you able to do about anything you want to do. Use of provisionals. Like in everything, we have to know how to provisionalize the case. Sometimes we need them, sometimes we can't have them, but usually we do need to use them in some degree. And then the final prosthesis. Believe it or not, that's rarely the hardest part of the whole, of the whole uh, treatment for the patient. And hopefully if you've spoken to the patient as you've worked through the treatment, they understand the final restoration and they're appreciative of where you end up. What are our options, just in a general sense? From a removable point of view, we could do a conventional denture. There is nothing wrong with a maxillary full denture. There's a lot wrong with a mandibular full denture because it's a totally different restoration. But a maxilla, we have a palate, we have good bone quite often, we can do a lot to support the patient. But we know that we're going to lose alveolar bone over time. If you have a relatively young patient and you see that that bone is lost in a relatively short time, we can have lots of problems. So there are issues. We can also place a fewer number of implants or maybe implants that aren't as stable and make a restoration that's what we call implant assisted. It still uses the soft tissue, maybe even the palate for support, but it uses the implants to create retention.